Work is a valuable part of our existence. Useful work can not only provide us with financial gains, but it can help us to become happy, fulfilled individuals. The world of work is exciting, challenging, and demanding, but it can be very satisfying. Your presenter is a Jamaican author who has gained international recognition as one of the most dynamic trainers who has helped thousands of people enter the workforce with confidence. Almina delivers world-class training and will help you to become a top performer, working to the standards of any corporation in any country. Let us join Almina and find out what it takes to become job ready quickly. A very warm welcome. What we're going to talk about is how to win that job and how to hold the job. And the first thing I'd like to say is that if you want a job, the first thing you have to do is create the desire for the job. You have to want the job. For instance, this is a bottle of perfume that I really wanted. I like it. It's, it's, it's really nice. And I wanted the perfume for months. And I was going to go and buy it. And my sister bought it for me and gave it to me. And I am happy because I got what I wanted. So one of the first things we have to do if we want something is create a strong enough desire to have what we want. And what I'd like to encourage you to do now is if you want a job, you're going to have the first thing is to desire the job, is to have that desire. Because once you have the desire, other things fall into place. Once you have the desire, you can set a goal. Once you set a goal, you can set a plan. And once you set a plan, you're going to do all the necessary things that's involved in getting what you want. So I'd like to say that in order to get the job quickly and to keep the job, the first thing you have to do is have that desire all the time to get that job and the job you want. What I'd like to suggest also, if you'd like to work in a bank or a hospital or anywhere, go look at the building, walk in there, go into the environment, talk to somebody and come back and think about it. If the desire is strong enough, you're going to take all the steps to get what you want. The second thing is that you have to be able to learn the skills necessary to get that job. So with the desire, you're going to set a goal. And the goal is, I am going to acquire all the skills necessary to get that job. So right now, you're in this class. And I know that you can get a job. The jobs are out there. And all you have to do is want the job badly enough create the desire and fulfill the desire, learn the skills, learn the skills necessary. And if you increase your desire and your skills on an ongoing basis, you will succeed. For instance, if you're doing 25 words per minute in typing, that commands a certain salary. If you're doing 30 words per minute or 40 words per minute, it sometimes commands a higher salary. And there's a big difference between 30 words a minute salary and 60 words a minute salary. So if you want to get into the job market and get in there very quickly, learn the skills that are necessary. Develop the attitude that I am going to get that job. When I went out in the job market, I found that with all my experience, all my customer service experience, nobody would hire me without those skills. So I found that by adding just those skills to my repertoire of previous experience, I've now become valuable, um, employable. I'm going to ask Dr. Harris another million dollar question, and that is, when you're on the job, what is it that is going to make that employer offer you a raise? What is it that is going to allow you to be promoted? Because sometimes there are promotions and job openings, and they always look at people. What is it? Dr. Harris, what is it that would make you decide who gets that job? Well, I think it's always a matter of money. We have to make some money in order to give you a raise. If the office is not making any money, then you can't really get a raise. So you can't expect that. But outside of that, individuals contributing to the office as a whole, people who go out of their way 
to make certain that the office is functioning, do, they go that extra mile. They don't just do their job and say statements like, oh, it's not in my job description. Those never work, never helps an individual to progress any further. It's the person that's got a little extra all the time. Is that's the person that always is going to be the first person to be uh, given a raise, more so than seniority or anything like that. Any individual who's going to give a raise, those are the things that they would look for. Someone who's really motivated to help the office as a whole, goes that extra mile to, to give the office that personality that it needs, that you're trying to maintain. Because your personality and the office personality should be reflected in the people that are employed. And as long as you're going hand in hand with that and you give that extra um, step, then you too can get a raise and keep moving forward. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, in the job market today, people are looking for the best, the best, not just performance, but the best, the, the person who can go the extra mile. And, you know, if you are, if you are doing the job that you are paid for day in, day out, then you really don't have any right to a raise because you're already being paid for what the job you're doing. But if you do the extra, and you assume extra responsibilities, and you have to generate income for that company, whatever it is, you would have earned the right for a raise. And like Dr. Harris is saying, when it's time for a raise, you will get it. So the important thing is to focus on the rewards. What is it you're going to get? What you're going to achieve when you get into the job market? Apart from the financial gains, you're going to feel good about yourself. You know, you're going to have more self-esteem and more self-respect. And people are going to treat you the same way. So from this moment on, I'd like you to start thinking in terms of, I am going to get that job. I'm going to lift my self-esteem. I'm going to walk in the interview with confidence. You know, one of the reasons why people can't get a job sometimes, among other things, is that they are afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of, you know, what is involved that they don't know about. What I'd like you to do is to think in terms of negotiating your skills for money. When you walk into an interview, I don't want you to walk in there with the attitude that, well, maybe they'll give me the job, maybe they won't, maybe I'm not qualified. No maybes. You are getting a skill. You develop your personality. You develop everything that's necessary to get that job. And what you think about is negotiating. I am negotiating my value. I'm negotiating my services in return for a salary. So if you go in there with that confidence and you negotiate, you'll get the job. And if you dress for the job, if you develop a professional image, if you increase your skills, you will get the job. And I promise you, you will get to the top and stay there. You raise me up.